a key twisted in the lock, and the old oak door creaked open. Oliver whooshed behind the sofa and peered out as two shadowy figures entered the dark room. You were pretty lucky to inherit property like this. If it was me, though, I'd tear this old house down and build a new one. Oh, not on your life! Mary and I love old houses. I think we'll fix it up and move in. All right then, but I hope you're not afraid of ghosts because this old place is pretty spooky. The moment Oliver heard the door close, he flew up the stairs, meeting his parents on the landing. Mama goes through her wispy arms about her son. Thank goodness you're all right. Did you see them? Pop Ghost asked gravely. Did they say what they wanted? Oliver nodded. They're going to move in. Mama Ghost gasped, but Papa curled a vapory arm around her shoulders and murmured, "Let's hope it's just a false alarm." It wasn't. The very next day, workmen arrived, swarming all over the house. They checked the plumbing and the electricity, cleaned, painted, and rolled out new flooring. The little Ghost family had to hide all day in an attic bureau drawer. A week later, as the new family moved in, the ghosts peered at them through the heat vents. I think it's time we paid a visit to Lex and Dorinda. Poppy Ghost moaned, and Mama quickly nodded. Oliver's tail trembled and his heart thumped in his chest as he and his parents knocked on the door to the aunt's enchanted residence. After all, they were witches. Dorinda's mint green face and lavender hair peeked around the door, and her. Golden eyes lit up like firecrackers as she reached out to whisk them inside. Lexa, darling, you'll never guess who's here! She shrieked. Oliver's eyes grew wide as he gazed at a room dimly lit by a green glow. Oh, for goodness' sake! Lexa flashed her eyes at them over spectacles that balanced on the end of her warty green nose, but she continued to rock to and fro, knitting with bone needles on a sweater with at least a dozen arms. Let me. Yes, she said through pursed lips. You were in a fix of some kind. Well, Papa stammered. I'm afraid we are in a bit of a situation. Just as I thought. Lexa poked a bony finger toward her brother. And now that you're in trouble, you've decided it's a good time to come for a visit. Is that it? Papa looked horrified, but Dorinda came quickly to his rescue. Of course not. We're delighted that you've come, aren't we, Lexa? She cooed as she flitted about the room, her long lavender hair swirling about her as she lit the candles one by one with her fingertips. Why don't you make yourselves comfy on the sofa and tell us all about it? Lexa continued to knit, her needles clacking and her foot tapping as Papa Ghost explained the unhappy situation. Then a low cackle began deep in her throat and grew till it filled the whole room. In a flash, she jumped to her feet and began to pull weird-looking substances off the shelf. Let me see. I'll need ton of bat, wood of hog, and tail of scorpion. Oh, this is lovely! I've been waiting forever to use this little spell. <laughs> I call it the pest exterminator. <laughs> Wait, Lexa. Wait. If we cast the spell on the Ames family, what will it do to them? <gasps> well, first they'll turn green, then big purple spots will pop out all over them, and orange pus will ooze out, and then, and then they'll die. Lexa, I do think that's a bit drastic. Oh, for heaven's sake! Lexa screamed, shaking her green claw-like fingers above her flying orange hair. You could have been the greatest warlock that ever lived. But you just didn't have the stomach for it, did you? And look at you now—a little ghost of a man. Papa flew into the air and hovered above his sister, his eyes blazing and his nostrils flaring. Mama swooshed up behind him, pulling on his tail. Please come down, Garrett. It's just not worth it. Oh no, now let's not argue, dear ones. Dorinda pleaded, batting plum-colored lashes so long they all but swept the floor. I have the perfect solution—a little thing I call imaginary allergy powder. That's it. Mama swooshed across the room and enveloped the charming little witch in her misty embrace. The Ames will think they're allergic to the old house and they'll leave. Oh, fiddlesticks! Lexa rolled her eyes and curled her lips in disgust. You really don't need any of this, you know. Just cook up a little ghostly mischief, then appear above their heads in the middle of the night. Oh, oh yes! Dorinda shrieked, her hair swirling around her like a purple cloud as she flounced about in her excitement. And the more frightening you can be, the better. Humans are insanely afraid of ghosts.、Ooh. Oliver started to giggle. Then Lexa began to cackle, and soon they were all laughing until their eyes ran. 
the little ghost family felt much better as they flew homeward through the starry night. Salt in the sugar bowl, soap flakes in the mashed potato box. Oliver was having the time of his life. Papa Ghost was in charge of electrical malfunctions, little things like lights turning on and off by themselves, and the vacuum cleaner zooming through the room without anyone pushing it. Mama freaked them all out by singing a lullaby in an unoccupied room, but when Cressa opened the door, there was no one there. A streak of orange dashed by. It was Jinx the cat in hot pursuit of Morpheus, Oliver's pet rat. Humans couldn't see the little ghost rat, but cat should could. One flying leap and he landed on the wall shelves, knocking books and knick-knacks every which way. Morpheus kept just a hair's breadth ahead of him till the damage was done. Then he disappeared through the wall. Now for the clincher, the ghastly appearance. They had decided not to howl. Just stand at the bottom of Nathan and Cressa's bed and smile. Dorinda called that leering, and she said it frightened humans almost as much as howling did. But the words they heard rumbling through the heat bin sent them pushing back to the attic without doing either. They had gone too far. The Ames could take no more. They had decided to tear the old house down. Oh, we should never have listened to those two, Mama sobbed into her anky. No more tricks, Papa demanded. Maybe the Ames will change their minds. It might have worked, too, if Morpheus had just behaved. Morpheus! Morpheus, where are you? Oliver whispered as he searched every corner of the attic. That sneaky little rat. He's downstairs harassing the cat again. I'll get you, you little pest, Oliver mumbled as he slipped through the heat bend and whisked under the bed into his old room. The one ten-year-old Ricky slept in now. Morpheus rounded the corner and zipped into the room with Jinx the cat right on his tail. Bringing up the rear came Ricky, who skidded around the corner just in time to see Jinx dash under the bed. I've got you now, you little monster, he yelled as he dove under the bed, determined to get the cat before he did any more damage. Oliver grabbed Morpheus, and Ricky nabbed Jinx. Two seconds later, they were nose to nose under the bed. It's hard to tell who screamed the loudest or jumped the quickest, but moments later they stood staring across the bed at each other, Ricky's red hair standing straight on end. Oliver was almost green with fright. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to frighten you. You're a ghost, Ricky stammered through white lips. Yes, I know, but you see, we've been living here for a long time before you came, and Morpheus just won't behave. Who's Morpheus, Ricky asked. Oliver held the wiggling little ghost rat up for Ricky to see. So that's why Jinx has been tearing around the house like his tail's on fire, Ricky gasped. You would have thought they'd known each other all their lives. It was instant friendship. Please don't tell your parents about us, Oliver begged. We'll be really, really quiet, and I'll never let Morpheus out again. I don't know, Ricky said thoughtfully. I think I should tell my parents about you. I think they'd like you. But Oliver wasn't so sure. Don't open your eyes till I tell you, and, and remember, they do look scary, but they're really nice. Ricky cautioned his parents as he positioned the ghosts and signaled them to put on their friendliest smiles. Okay! Ricky, if you found some animal in the woods, you can't. Cressa's gasp all but sucked in the draperies. She grabbed Nathan's arm like a tourniquet, and her eyes almost jumped out of their sockets. Nathan, however, stared straight at them, as if his eyes could bore holes into their vapory bodies. You're great and Azaria's ghosts, aren't you? He said matter-of-factly. You knew about this? Cressa croaked. You knew this house was haunted? No, no, yes, no. Well, I had heard the family stories, but I didn't... Nathan turned to look at Cressa. Everybody said they were crazy. She told them that her flowers grew like magic because of her gardener, a ghost. Um, that would have been me, Papa Ghost muttered, looking down at the floor. And her legendary cakes and pies were the work of her cook, also a ghost. Mm -hmm. Well, that would have been me, Mama Ghost's cheeks flushed pink. Nathan looked down at his hands and then back at the ghosts. And Azaria loved her ghosts. She said they were family. Family? Dad, you can't throw family out. And you can't tear their house down either, Ricky pleaded. You can see how nice they are. And Oliver's the best friend I've ever had. Let them stay, Dad, please. The room was silent. All you could hear was the ticking of the clock. Then Nathan pursed his lips and nodded. Well, I could use a good gardener.
Yes! Ricky punched the air with his fist and tackled his parents in a bear hug. Cressa, her eyes still somewhat glazed but wearing a smile, asked, Can you really make legendary pies? Oh, honey, Mama Ghost said, her eyes dancing and her dimpled cheeks glowing. Just you wait.